Mother, mother, there's too many of you dying and crying. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. You know we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. War is not the answer, cause only love can conquer. Hey, you know we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Picket signs and picket lines. Don't punish me with brutality. Come on, talk to me so you can see what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. What's going on? Ooh. gentlemen please take your seats our program is about to begin father father everybody thinks we're wrong come on you gotta sit dance come on who are they to judge us let me see you sway simply cuz our hair is long you know we got to find a way, grab your seats folks, to bring some loving here today. Picket signs and picket lines, ooh I see the light, don't punish me with brutality, come on talk to me so you can see what's going on, what's going on. What is going on with our healthcare system? What's going on? What's going on? What is going on with the inequities? <laughs> I want to know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's going on with the funding? What's going on with the gov? Oh. Do, 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 do. We got to do something, right? Right? Is there any doers in the room tonight? Put your hands together because we have a bunch of doers in the room tonight who are doing something about what needs to be done. Because if we don't do what we don't need to do, then we can't do what we got to do. We got to do what we got to do. Ooh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to the 2023 Transformative Change Awards. Come on now, let me hear you. <laughs> yes. My name is Coco Lorraine Vera, and I will be your co MC tonight. I am so excited to be here. I am truly honored to celebrate with all of you our community health champions. Let me say that again our community health champions. Thank you. And our health equity heroes, and she rose, and they rose. Yes. He rose, she rose, and they rose. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I am playing with you okr, across this province. But before we begin, it is my honor as a seventh generation Afro-Indigenous Canadian woman 
to acknowledge that the land on which we gather tonight has been home to a First Nations peoples from time immemorial. Mm -mm -mm. We acknowledge that what we now call Richmond Hill is on the treaty lands and territories of the Mississauga of the New Credit First Nations and the Mississauga of the Chippewa Nation of the Williams Treaty. We also recognize that this is part of the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee and the Huron-Wendat. Let's take a moment. Let's close our eyes. And let's acknowledge that this land is covered by the Dish One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Anishinaabek, including allied nations. To what? Hmm. To peacefully share and protect the resources around the Great Lakes. To share and protect the resources. This territory has also, it's always been a vibrant gathering place for all nations. That's the beauty. All nations are welcome. And indigenous people from all over North America are living here today. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to hold this celebration on this sacred land, on this territory. Yes? Yes. 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 So we say thank you. Miigwech. I am also honored to share a labor acknowledgement, recognizing the stolen labor of my ancestors and all who worked and continue to work against their will. We respectfully acknowledge our debt to the formerly enslaved peoples, primarily of African descent, whose labor built and grew the economy and infrastructure of a nation that refused to recognize their humanity. We recognize our debt to the exploited workers past and present, I might add, whose labor was and continues to be stolen through unjust practices. We acknowledge the theft of the labor is a theft of generational progress. Yes, yes, or yes. I gave you three options. <laughs> Pick one. We acknowledge that countless people of color have been robbed of the opportunity and wealth that their ancestors might otherwise have passed on to them. Yes, yes, or yes. With this labor acknowledge, we mourn the loss of life, the loss of liberty, and the lop of loss of opportunity, Ashe. May I hear you say that, Ashe, Ashe. Ah. So, thank you for joining us tonight <laughs> for the Transformative Change Awards Gala. Now, the last few years have been like no other. Can I get an amen? amen. Let's sing that song again. What's going on? <laughs> These times have been marked by unprecedented shifts, right? How much have you had to shift? If you were to write a list of all the things you had to do to shift because of the pandemic and everything else, how long would that list be? Mm -hmm. But as Alliance members, you remain steadfast. So we honor you tonight steadfast in your shared commitment to improving health and well-being for people and communities facing the biggest barriers in our province, those marginalized by poverty, isolation, racism, a lack of accessible services, stigma, and other social determinants. Y'all did your thing. Me being a marginalized black, cisgendered, Canadian, indigenous woman has been challenging 
especially as an entrepreneur. Health has been challenging, and I have my own stories, and I'm sure all of you have your own stories. The story of my son, a young black man who, who was really denied access to proper health care. For three years, they kept brushing him aside. How many of you have sat with individuals who were brushed aside and have come into your offices and wondered, how many of you have heard the, st the stories? He was one that was brushed aside. It wasn't until I brought him to my doctor and literally felt like I had to beg her to look because he had lost his uh, sense of taste. He lost his sense of smell. Oh, it's just a cold. Oh, it's just a cold. Oh, it's just a cold. No, it was a fungus, fungal cyanitis growing inside of his face for three years. And finally, they did a CAT scan, and they found it. And then a shift happened. I saw the best of the best of the best provide his, him with care. And they operated, and they got rid of the fungus, but he wasn't the same. And it was teeter-tottering, and every time he would go to the doctor, he, would, he was frustrated, and he was scared, and he was angry, and he didn't want to go, and he didn't want to be there because he didn't want to hear, I don't think you have asthma. As I'm not hearing something in your chest. Well, sadly, my precious boy passed away four years ago. So I'm angry because it's an injustice. And that's why we're here tonight, yes, yes, or yes. yes. That's why we're committed to this work, yes? yes? Because we are literally saving lives, yes? yes? We're doing our parts to make sure that these outcomes do not have to end the way it has for myself. Now, do I believe it was his time? Yes. Have I accepted the truth of his transition? Yes. Am I getting counseling? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I also know that even if it was his time, he could have gotten the care that he deserved even, even up to the very end. Yes? And when he was in that hospital for those last seven days, the doctors and the nurses, and the, they did everything in their power. So I know what this province, what this country is capable of. I know the kind of health care that we have, yes? And I know the kind of health care that we can have. And I know that it needs to be better. And I know that it's because of organizations like yours, all of the tireless work that's thankless. How many of y'all have gotten a thank you letter in the mail recently? <laughs> Tonight's the thank you letter. Yes? Whether it's health care or care for trans folks or what have you, that's what we're going to celebrate tonight. And so, DJ hit it. We look to you. We look to you. As I laid him down, heaven hear me now. Was I lost without a cause After giving it my all Winter storms have come And darkened my sun And after all that I've been through Who on earth can I turn to? I look to to you, yeah. After all my strength is gone, in you I can be strong. I look to you, you, I look to you, yeah. And when melodies are gone, in you I hear a song, I look to you. About to lose my breath, there's no fighting left, sinking to rise no more. Searching for that open door. See every road that I've taken led to my regret. And I didn't think I was gonna make it. So I lift up my head and I look to you. After
after all my strength is gone. In you I can be strong. I look to you. I look to you. Yeah. And when melodies are gone, in you I hear a song. I look to you. Defeat is calling. Take me far away from the battle. I need you to shine on me. I look to you. I look to you. Yeah. After all my strength is gone. In you I can be strong, I look to you, I look to you, yeah. And when melodies are gone, in you I hear a song, I look to you. members I look to you thank you thank you thank you and so we are the voice of the voiceless yes we are the champions we use our privilege, our education, our know-how, our grit to make a difference in this world. And as you continue to do this important work across the province, it is important to pause and share our success stories. And we got some success, success stories tonight, do we not? We have a great evening ahead of us as we present three Transformational Change Awards and we have a few individual awards to give out as well. After the award ceremony, we go have some delicious dinner. Who's hungry? <laughs> and then we'll cap it off with some dancing. Okay. And I'm going to watch and see who's on the dance floor, right? We're going to do, we're going to do the, the Dougie. We're going to do the Running Man, right? We, are, we, are we ready? Are we ready for that? <laughs> and so now it is my honor and my privilege to welcome my co-host to the stage, Libran. Oh, why did I forget how to say your name? Gabri Michael. Did I say that correct, sir? Please put your hands together for our board chair of the Alliance of Health for Healthy Communities. Uh. Where's your song, Do you want to, are you still, you, you want your appetite intact? Um, I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. It's like, <laughs> what did you do? Oh, my goodness. Uh, but it's, it's a great honor and pleasure. Um, good evening, everyone. I am I'm touched. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, what you said was meaningful. Uh, I think I felt it in my bones. So I really, really, I do appreciate it. Thank you, yes. So I'm very, very honored to be on the stage with Coco to celebrate the, the recipients of this year's Transformation Change Awards. Um, this morning, we kicked off the conference that is all about imagining and building an integrated healthcare system that puts health equity and community voices and needs at its center. It might, you know, I might be biased, and I am biased, uh, and, but I am truthful at the same time. 
but I believe that the Alliance members have that covered. Nous avons des dizaines d'années d'expérience dans la création des programmes et services conjointement avec les personnes et les communautés que nous servons et dans la collaboration avec des partenaires des systèmes de soins de santé, de services sociaux et de services communautaires. Tout ça dans le but de satisfaire aux besoins des personnes qui, tont, qui font face à de multiples obstacles croisés et cumulés et de veiller à l'équité en matière de santé et de bien-être pour toutes les personnes en Ontario. Tonight, we will hear inspiring stories of these collaborations and connections, stories that demonstrate, demonstrate the courage to reimagine the future, perseverance to forge ahead, and unwavering determination to build a more equitable and integrated healthcare system. Avant de commencer, je tiens à saluer au nom du conseil d'administration les candidates et candidats pour le prix du changement transformateur et le travail extraordinaire que vous vous euh, accomplissez dans les diverses communautés de l'Ontario. I also want to acknowledge the great work of the award selection committee, thank you very much, who took the time to review all the nominations and help the board choose this year's recipients. Round of applause for all the nominees and selection committee members, thank you. And now over to Coco to introduce the first Transformation Award recipient of the night. <laughs> Thank you, Lieben. French. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Je pense que tu veux aller à l'école so I can learn some French again. Parce que c'est magnifique, c'est fantastique, c'est incroyable. Oui, oui, c'est ça. Oui, oui, oui. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so our first award goes to Oral Health Education Program operated in Windsor by Windsor Family Health Team, by the Windsor Family Health Team. We know that oral health has a, uh, you know, uh, the infections in oral health has a devastating impact on systemic disease from diabetes to arthritis, yes? Mm -hmm. Right? So focusing, they focus on education, prevention, and community collaboration. The program has succeeded in improving the oral health of marginalized people and communities. I think about all the, 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 the parents out there, single parents out there who don't have benefits and who need access to health care, yes? By embedding the oral care into their integrated primary health care model, Windsor Family Health Team have expanded their ability to support their clients, especially those who otherwise would not have access to this kind of education and support. The program empowers people to take control of their oral health, yes, and make free oral health care more realistic and accessible, yes? Yes, it's important work. Let's play the video and find out more about what they're doing. The Oral Health Education Program um, is a program that was developed approximately two years ago. And it started from um, a conceptual thought. I, I contacted um, a good friend and colleague of mine, Jennifer Ridsdale, and I asked her if she would please um, join me on this uh, on this opportunity. And so we created this program together. And uh, without her, I don't think I would have gone 
into this um, into this realm of work just because I needed her expertise. So when I see when I see patients and I provide them with the the screenings and the education and then um, also uh, referrals to um, help uh, or to access care and and really we um, I can provide to them like an oral health plan so that they have you know kind of the steps in place. I see abscesses, I see broken teeth, I see people who are in need of oral health care for sure, and that does affect your overall health and and well-being. We were funded by the Windsor Essex Community Foundation and Green Shield Canada. So when we developed the program for Windsor, we recognized that there was a great opportunity to develop a program for both the primary care sector, also for the acute care sector. Uh, we know that the majority of our patients are marginalized, they're vulnerable, and oftentimes the, um, their oral health is poor. Marginalized individuals often face barriers in accessing any type of health care, specifically oral health, um, and is due to factors such as low income, lack of insurance coverage, geographic location, or just plain discrimination. We were also going to go to the patient wherever possible, which is why we, we did work with Windsor Regional Hospital and we did propose this strategy to our partners at Windsor Regional because um, we knew that there was um, a tremendous need in the, um, the mental health unit. Oral health pathways for patients on a mental health unit or again any uh, marginalized uh, people emphasize health promotion and education. It focuses on um, targeting uh, specific oral health challenges related to their uh, living conditions. The program itself is multifaceted, so there is an assessment, it's a minor assessment. Um, there are steps to do um, a caries assessment, um, a um, oral cancer screening. People feel like they've learned something. Patients feel like they um, they were listened to, they were considered, they were given the opportunity to get um, a toothbrush, floss, um, minor treatments. They were exposed to subsidies and opportunities for funding that they didn't even know that they had access to. The program did, um, did begin in the primary care setting and then through our um, community partners, we are, um, you know, now obviously in the acute care, um, in the mental health unit, and then, but there's also um, the community outreach that I've that I've also done with the Windsor Essex Ontario Health Team on the medical mobile support bus, and they go into um, like a mobile that's a mobile clinic that goes into high priority neighborhoods. Windsor Regional Hospital provides us with the support to allow our vision within the system to become something that um, is beneficial for our patients. And only through those collaborations and through those um, integrations, we're going to be able to make huge impact in our communities. One thing that we strive for um, and what we've executed with the Windsor Family Health Team is developing that collaborative integrated appro approach and really making it seamless for the patient. In such a short time, the impacts have been tremendous. The education and awareness has been remarkable for the patients served, and the feedback is coming from the patients and their families, as well as healthcare providers, as well as our psychiatry team. The health system in Windsor Essex is developing into a trusting environment where we can work together. And as our community grows and our OHT grows, we're starting to take opportunities to work together, build the trust, and then through that trust, we can then integrate our services with each other and work on common initiatives. And I'm very passionate about, about this program. I love it. I see the benefits of what it can do for patients and, and just how grateful and thankful they are. And so 
there's there's nothing like that for me. I'm just happy to, honored to be a part of it, really. And so I did the research. How much does it cost to get a cavity filled when you don't have benefits? Anybody know? Around 300, $350? What about uh, how much does it cost to get a root canal? What if you have three cavities, one teeth, tooth that needs to be pulled, a root canal that needs to be done? And you're going to choose between paying your rent. So thank you. Please put your hands together and help me welcome to the stage Margot Riley, Executive Director of Windsor Health Family Health Team, to accept the award on behalf of the team. Yes, I can't hear you. Thank you. Good evening. I stand before you with immense gratitude and pride as I address the members of the Review Committee and membership of the Alliance for Healthier Communities. My name is Margot Riley, and I'm the Executive Director of the Windsor Family Health Team and its Windsor Team Care Center program. I'm joined by my colleagues tonight, Jennifer Ridsdale, who you met on the video. Thank you. And Sierra Slickbower, who is our project coordinator for this program. We recognize the unique needs within the city of Windsor and the excellent work that is happening in our community. We aim to deliver a program that is non-duplicative, Within our, local health, within our local health system and a program that meets the needs of the high priority neighborhoods that we serve. In a remarkable span of just six and a half months, our efforts have already positively influenced the lives of 254 individuals and the numbers continue to grow. Behind this achievement stands a part-time team consisting of one dedicated dental hygienist and one highly efficient project coordinator. Our dedicated team has put in relentless effort to develop inclusive program streams that cater to diverse needs of the population that we serve. And both through and, oh, sorry, both internally and through our partnerships with other organizations. Their tireless commitment to the program is fortified by the invaluable support of Windsor Family Health Team's Family Practice Program, Team Care Center Program, Windsor Regional Hospital's Executive Committee and Mental Health Assessment Unit staff, and a variety of community collaborators who share our vision. Also, a very special thanks to our funders, the Windsor Essex Community Foundation and Green Shield Canada. On behalf of our oral health team, I extend my sincerest thanks for awarding the Windsor Family Health Team as the recipient of the Transformative Change Award. This recognition reinforces our unwavering commitment to making oral health education a tangible reality and driving transformative change within our local healthcare landscape because oral health is healthcare. Thank you. I think oral health is healthcare, but I would say oral health is primary healthcare. And we have a long work to do, but I think you've started the journey. So another round of applause for uh, the Windsor Family Health Team Oral Healthcare Program. Thank you.
The next award that we'll be giving out tonight is the a Adriana Tetley Legacy Award, named after, we haven't forgotten, it's been a while, but, um, you know, the former CEO who left a deep imprint not only on the Alliance, but also Ontario's healthcare system. This award is meant to celebrate emerging leaders in the sector, leaders who also demonstrate Adriana's tenacity, feistiness, and dedication to advancing health equity through primary health care. Adriana could not make it, but uh, we are, uh, you know, this is a great legacy that we have to remember the work that has gone before us. And so, yes, thank you. Yes. And so this year's Adriana Tetley <laughs> Legacy Award recipient demonstrates, <laughs> what am I doing? What am I up to? You're going to get surprised. All of these qualities. And I have been tasked with introducing her, but I want to make sure that I introduce her with all the grace that she deserves mm -hmm. because she has a very special name and I don't want to butcher it. And so I have my sisters here who are going to help me introduce this wonderful champion. Her name is? Nsaloense Ndawana. <laughs> she is also known as Nala, as Nala. The executive director of Hamilton's Urban Core CHC, she took on the role after the passing of a long-standing Hamilton Urban Core member, Denise Brooks, first as the temporary ED, and then on permanent basis in September 2021. In two short years, Nala took the organization through the morning of Denise Brooks, led through COVID, advanced the capital project, moved to interim sites, launched a fundraiser campaign, steered through accreditation and strategic planning, and raised the voices of marginalized populations to health leadership tables in Hamilton. Just saying that sentence wore me out. Please join me in welcoming Nala to the stage to accept the award. No one person can make meaningful change in communities alone. It takes a village. Thank you to the Alliance for this recognition. However, this does not belong to me alone. This award belongs to all that showed up and supported the efforts in our city, especially in the last three years and demanded that things need to be done differently. I humbly accept this on their behalf. Improving health and well-being in our communities is all our business and all of us in this room wake up every day to do it because we care and we want to make a difference in the lives of our fellow community members. As a black woman born in Gwanda, Zimbabwe and having moved to Canada, I do not have the luxury to stand back and wear blinkers when I see injustices around me. I don't get to unmask my beautiful brown skin. I live in it every single day. I don't get to check out of my gender at the end of the workday. I live in it 
every waking moment. Because of this, it is my responsibility to contribute in any small way that I can in working towards breaking some of the existing barriers that exist within our healthcare system today as they affect me too. The pandemic not only exposed what already existed in our communities and showed the glaring inequities that many before us have come and worked to try and dismantle. A lot of work lies ahead and it is more urgent than ever that we all build on the small gains of the last few years to strategically make more strides towards boldly standing up for our collective core values as a sector, to vow not to leave anyone behind, to be a change agent no matter how small, to commit to lift the voices of those that are not being heard. All people need to be seen. All people must be heard for meaningful change to continue to happen. As a proud daughter of Umakumalo of Zulu descent, born to a woman who has always faced so many barriers during her lifetime, I left the land of my forefathers not by choice but by circumstances. I'm, a, I'm proud to call myself an African Canadian. This is my second home. I get to wake up every day to work alongside with like-minded individuals who are passionate about what they do. Thank you to the Alliance for this honor. Thank you to the Alliance Black Health Committee members for being unwavering, for being an unwavering source of encouragement. Thank you to the Alliance Strategy Group for all of your ideas on how we collectively and strategically can make meaningful gains in trying to transform our healthcare system. Thank you to Hamilton Urban Corps past and current board members, past and current staff that show up every day to fight the good fight on behalf of those that right now need a helping hand. Thank you to fellow Hamiltonians who have been brave and willing to face our common challenges together. Thank you to an amazing group of friends that show up to continue to keep me grounded. And above all, thank you to David, to Tanaka. You both continue to support me unconditionally in this journey, in this journey called life. I get to show up and do this work because of your amazing love. Thank you. Our next Transformative Chair Award recipient is Guelph Wellington Digital Equity Coalition. <laughs> During the pandemic, most of our lives shifted to the virtual domain exposing digital health inequities in many communities across the province. In response, a group of stakeholders in the Guelph Wellington area, co-led by Guelph Community Health Center and Guelph Public Library, they came together to ensure that people of their community can have access to the use of technology. Their work is rooted in a belief that digital access is a social determinant of health and is essential, I'm gonna say that again, is essential for a person to fully participate in our society, yes, yes, or yes. yes. Through a collective impact approach, the coalition works towards its vision of a community without barriers, I love that to digital participation. Let's turn our attention to the screens. My name is Dana Nutley. I've been doing advocacy work um, in Guelph, but you know, specifically in the Onward Willow neighborhood uh, for, for, I don't know, close to 20 years. Having some struggles myself and hearing from my neighbors about their struggles around uh, digital equity, um, 
I decided to go check out the meeting. And a couple years ago, I started a conversation with the Guelph CHC, um, particularly about um, the digital inequities facing our community. And through those conversations, uh, we started a basically a community forum that was discussing the digital inequities in Guelph and the Wellington area. And there was representation at that forum from a variety of sectors, including health and social services, uh, businesses, education, and community members uh, as well. And at the conclusion of the forum, there was a call to action that sparked the development of the Guelph Wellington Digital Equity Coalition. We are a growing group of key agencies and community members who work towards addressing the digital divide and to provide um, development uh, recommendations and, and ways of implementing uh, digital equity initiatives. So too many of our community members are being left out um, because they don't have access to digital devices, to internet connections, or to the, they don't have the skills or confidence to use the devices. And this results in clients not having the ability to fully participate in society. And the impact of that is both the surface level of not having that access, but even deeper within that is the socioeconomic and health implications that come with not having that access. If you've got the majority of the population moving towards digital, um, you know, digital everything, but you still have a part of the population that, you know, is, is even afraid of cell phones and, and whatnot, um, you know, they're, they're the ones that are missing doctor's appointments, that are, are, are missing, you know, um, you know, social programming and, and things like that. The Alliance has included digital equity in the Health Equity Charter, and Guelph CHC and the Guelph Wellington Digital Equity Coalition members um, understand that having access to digital devices, to internet, and the skills to use those um, tools um, must be accepted as social determinants of health. And what we know is that digital inequities really mirror, reflect, and increase the existing social inequities uh, for our clients. By reaching out to different agencies and inviting community members to share their lived experiences, we've been able to learn more of the nuance of the experience of the digital divide so that we can co-create community-specific solutions that will actually help our community members when we pool the talents and skills and, and brain power of all the organizations that are trying to tackle little bits of it and work off of each other's programming and strengths, we're building um, programs where all of the right input from the right people is being looked at. We have a digital access guide that will soon be added to the website and that has a listing of where folks can go in Guelph, Wellington to access free or low cost devices, where they can get uh, free internet connections, um, where devices can be charged because we know that that's um, an issue for some of our folks and where people can access some of those digital skill building opportunities as well. Uh, we also have partners that are working together on device drives, digital workshops and skill building, lending libraries, and those things have all come about because of those partnerships that have been created um, as us all working together on the coalition. The students are terrific because they help do things like, for instance, build the website for the Digital Equity Coalition here in Guelph, Wellington, and to also help me to um, repurpose devices like laptops uh, and tablets and any of the other peripherals to the community. It's a Chromebook that has also been provided to me through a local uh, non-for-profit so that I can participate. One of the interesting things about being involved as a member of the Guelph Wellington Digital Equity Coalition and also being on the myself on the steering committee of the coalition is that I actually am becoming a better researcher because I'm able to really understand what are some of the problems that are being experienced day to day by individuals and organizations within the community and what kind of new knowledge or what kind of um, analysis is needed by these kinds of organizations. 
So we're actually asking much better questions because we're having these conversations and discussions on a regular basis with the community. By working at the Guelph CHC, it's like realizing there's a partner in the community who's working towards the same things, just in a different way. We have um, urban and rural representation, we have not-for-profit, health and social services, and as well as community voice, which is very important to us. Um, and it's been really great because there's been a lot of new relationships that have been built amongst the agencies who may not uh, typically work together, which is really exciting. And work together, we know that uh, the work of digital uh, equity is complex and that uh, none of us can address that well on our own. So working together has been really important. Please help me welcome our digital equity champions to receive the award. Carrie Cummings from Guelph CHC and Jen Lizzo from Guelph Public Library. Come on down. Woo! I can't hear you. Come on, put your hands together. We need to celebrate our champions tonight. Oh. Come on down. Thank you very much. Um, we're just a few of the people uh, that represent our growing group. You know Jen and I from the video, but we also are joined here by our friends uh, Jessica Veldman from the County of Wellington and Shayla Spalding from the University of Guelph. Um, on behalf of the Guelph Wellington Digital Equity Coalition, we want to express how deeply honored and grateful we are to receive this prestigious award. Thank you to the Alliance and the Award Selection Committee for recognition that digital equity is important, that it's a social determinant of health, and that access to technology is not just nice to have, but it's required and it's necessary to fully participate in society. We are grateful to every coalition member who along the way has said yes to the idea that a multi-sector collective impact initiative addressing digital equity might actually work. We thank clients and community members who courageously spoke about experiencing the digital divide. Their stories are what illuminated the unseen digital inequities in our communities. We are grateful for community members like Dana, who shared their time, skills, and lived experiences. And we are humbled by the community's trust and confidence that we would rise to their call for action. We thank our community's frontline workers who listen to their clients and relay the importance of this work to their leadership teams. And we thank those leadership teams for acknowledging the importance of the systemic issue and who believed that putting time, energy, and resources into an initiative like this was worth the investment. And we thank the Alliance for amplifying the importance of digital equity and in their provision of foundational resources like the digital equity scorecard, glossary, and diary. Uh, these were so valuable in kickstarting our coalition's momentum. And we want to give a big heartfelt thank you to Brian Sanker Singh from the Alliance. Brian, you are somewhere. Where's Brian? Anyone? I can't see. Okay, there he is. Hey, Brian. Um, so Brian is exceedingly bright and passionate and so gracious with his time. Um, he's a valued mentor and we can't thank him enough for sharing his knowledge and supporting the coalition. Um, this model that we have um, 
been creating is scalable and can be replicated in other communities. And knowing Brian, uh, the biggest thank you or recognition that he could get would be to receive lots of emails from you. Um, <laughs> reaching out, hoping to do um, some digital equity work in your own communities. The coalition started as a group of people from different personal and professional backgrounds with a hope to address the digital divide. Now, we are colleagues who listen, share, and learn together. And together, we will make change because we know that we can have a much greater impact by working together. And that's what receiving this award celebrates. Thank you. So digital equity is also primary health care. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This is really great. Uh, GWDEC, uh, Guelph Wellington Digital Equity Coalition. Thank you again. Uh, congratulations. The next award um, is a bit tough for me to go through, but um, is named after a prominent leader, Denise Brooks. For more than 25 years, Denise Brooks was the executive director of Hamilton Urban Core Community Health Center. Um, Denise had a long history of social advocacy, community service, and development in the city of Hamilton, and is remembered for her commitment to health equity and social justice. As you all know, Denise was, was a great mentor and friend. So, if my voice goes a little bit funny, you would understand. And also my good friends at Hamilton Urban Core CHC. The award celebrates individuals who have made outstanding contribution to poverty reduction, advancing health equity and social justice, and show a strong commitment to anti-oppression and anti-racism. This year's recipient of the Denise Brooks Health Equity Champion Award comes from outside Alliance membership. Once again, highlighting that achieving the Alliance's vision of equitable health and well-being requires involvement of multiple partners across healthcare systems and beyond. The board is honored to present the award to Holly Prince. Project Manager at Center for Education and Research on Aging and Health at Lakehead University. <laughs> Holly is Canada's indigenative, Indigenous Palliative Care Leader who works to advance policies, education, service and programming at local, provincial and national levels. The nomination package emphasized her ability to blend the best practices of participatory action research with indigenous methodologies oh, and apply it in ways that recognize diverse indigenous culture, value, knowledge, and promoting holistic well being. Yes, yes, and yes. Holly prioritizes ethics and relational accountability, collaboration with indigenous health and social care experts and communities to develop resources that offer guidance for providing culturally safe care. Can we say that together? Culturally safe care. Strengthening partnerships and advocating for enhanced services and supportive policy. Join me in welcoming Holly Prince to the stage. Bosho Rejuay Quain Adishnakas, Thunderbane Donjibama Quadro Dem. My English name is Holly Prince, and I am an Anishinaabe Quay and member of Opawag and Isining in northwestern Ontario. I come from the Maquado Dem, who are the Bear Clan, 
the medicine people in Anishinaabe communities. I was raised in Beardmore, Ontario, home to the world's largest snowman, <laughs> on my traditional territory surrounding an Imagozagigan, also known as Lake Nipigan, where my family has lived and thrived for generations. I am the lead for the Indigenous Peoples Health and Aging Division at the Centre for Education and Research on Aging and Health at Lakeage University, also known as SARA, where I work as a project manager. And part of my role is to plan, implement, and evaluate palliative care education initiatives for the Indigenous peoples as they prepare to journey back to spirit world. I currently lead educational initiatives in seven provinces, British Columbia, Manitoba, Ontario, and all of Atlantic Canada. I have trained over 250 First Nation communities, over 120 associated health organizations, and my team and I have educated over 1,500 frontline care providers from a variety of professions spanning all levels and areas, including directors, doctors, nurses, personal support workers, spiritual care, navigators, translations, and all areas of health and social care. Over the past 20 years, I have dedicated myself to advocating for equitable access to culturally relevant health services for Indigenous peoples. And this journey began back in 2002 with my friend who was only 24 years old at the time, who was diagnosed with cancer. He came from a small remote First Nations community in Northern Ontario. And I journeyed with him throughout his illness until he transitioned back home to the spirit world. And this experience opened my eyes to the extreme gaps and barriers to culturally relevant health care for Indigenous peoples. My friend's family's philosophy on life and death, their meaningful interactions with the spirit world, their use of traditional healers and medicine, and the need for the large extended family members to be present, all pointed to a severe disconnect between their worldview with the approaches of the westernized medical system. After the passing of my friend in 2003, I entered my master's in social work. I shifted my focus from clinical social work and addictions and mental health to macro social work where I could better advocate for research and policy change within the westernized healthcare system. My goal was about exploring the challenges and barriers that prevent equitable access to care and to find ways to improve policies and programs and services that could have a positive impact on the end-of-life care of Indigenous peoples. So palliative care is increasingly being promoted as a basic human right. We advocate for this, we understand this, and we agree that everyone should be provided with the opportunity to live and die with dignity. Yet despite the emphasis on improving access, we still have a profound lack of equity for certain groups, and in particular, for Indigenous people. I have come to understand the immense health challenges faced by Indigenous peoples. Indigenous peoples around the world are consistently ranked lower in almost every social determinant of health as compared to their non-Indigenous counterparts. This results in profound health impacts and inequities, including higher rates of chronic illness and lower life expectancy. In addition, we have limited access to culturally relevant health care and face many barriers to care at end of life. So to improve these health outcomes and achieve equitable access to culturally safer care, Indigenous peoples must lead that way forward in developing approaches and models to caring for our own people at end of life. As a PhD candidate in educational studies at Lakeage University, this is what my research focuses on. The need for Anishinaabe people to reconnect, resurge, and revitalize Anishinaabe Kandasawin, which is knowledge, and healthy caregiving models to decolonize our ways of caring for our own people at end of life. In equity-oriented healthcare, it's imperative to acknowledge Indigenous perspectives on health and well-being. This entails supporting Indigenous health systems and upholding Indigenous people's right to health. 
Healthcare providers within the westernized healthcare system must challenge and dismantle the structural systems and policies that were imposed upon us through colonization. They also... They also must be willing to scrutinize their own power structures through the lens of anti-racism and cultural humility. As an Anishinaabe Kwe, I hold equity, diversity, inclusion, and decolonization in high regard as they are crucial in creating a safe environment to amplify the voices of Indigenous peoples and honor our ways of knowing and being. Above all, I remain committed to making a positive impact on the future of my children by advocating for social justice, driving change, and transforming systems to promote holistic health and balance. I am deeply grateful to be have awarded the Denise Brooks Health Equity Champion Award. I want to say miigwech to my colleagues and peers who nominated me, including Dr. Mary Lou Kelly, Jessica Wyatt, and Cassandra Fernandez. Knowing that I have their support and dedication makes me a better person and makes the journey such a positive and rewarding experience. I want to say miigwech to the Alliance for Healthier Communities for this acknowledgement of my work and for recognizing and celebrating health champions. Chi miigwech. Wow, another round of applause, please, for Holly Prince. And I must apologize to you for not knowing your indigenous name. I would have come and had a whole entourage of people who could help me pronounce it, I'm sure. If I may for a moment say that it was an indigenous elder who helped me with my healing as my son transitioned. And it was the, as a black woman of African descent who lost my history, and as a indigenous, with indigenous roots here in Canada, where I was also denied access, I don't have culturally relevant um, knowledge of my own. And so I turned to an indigenous elder and it has brought me so much peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't bypass culturally relevant care because there's healing there, especially during the most difficult, painful experiences of our lives. Yes, yes, or yes. Yes. We all have things to contribute. That's why we're an alliance. Yes, yes, or yes. Yes. And if we can take the best of our healthcare systems with the best of indigenous healing, with the best of healings from all over Africa, from, from, from all over the world, traditions, then what would our healthcare system look like? Mm -hmm. What would it look like? So let me get back to these notes before I start singing another song. <laughs> 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 the tra <laughs> the transfer. I will. I don't don't get me started. I will at the end. Before y'all want me to sing another song at the end, maybe I will. We'll see. <laughs> that transformative change award. Um, the next transformative change award goes to primary health care provider, Trans Health Clinical Skills Development Pilot, run by Center Town CHC in Ottawa. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Faced with constantly growing referrals to their trans health clinic, Center Town CHC decided that the best way to serve our trans community in the Ch Champlain region was to address inaccessibility issues at the root and build the capacity for their primary care partners to deliver gender affirming care.
Recognizing that primary care is the best position is, is best positioned to deliver these services, but also acknowledging the lack of adequate training for clinicians. The pilot supported two primary health care organizations through education, on-site provider coaching, and training for entire teams extending from administration to providers. Both partner sites are learning sites for up to 97 medical residents annually, which means the ripple effect of this knowledge transfer and capacity building project will be long lasting. The project continues to grow and expand in new ways. Let's watch the video to learn more. The primary care provider uh, Trans Health Clinical Skill Development Project is a pilot project um, launched by Centertown Community Health Center uh, in response to the need for more uh, skill building opportunities uh, for our primary care partners in the Champlain region. We are the dedicated clinic uh, for trans health care for um, the population 17 plus. Um, unfortunately, um, we are not able to keep up with the volume of referrals uh, that are currently coming into our clinic. This is extremely dangerous for this population in particular because of suicidality. The suicidality is actually at its highest for this population once they've uh, identified that this is care that they need, um, but are not yet able to access it in a timely way. The entry point into our healthcare system is, if you have one, through your primary care provider. If they can also be the clinician that can offer that care, that provides the fastest way to achieving goals of care. Unfortunately, curriculum is not preparing providers uh, for providing gender-affirming care um, once they start practicing. There's a huge knowledge gap that needs to be addressed uh, in a very, very efficient and timely way. Um, and I think that our pilot project uh, meets exactly those needs. I would say that the pilot project certainly helped us fill in the gaps from A to Z, um, from educating us on how to provide um, an all-inclusive waiting room to using gender neutral and um, gender appropriate language to identifying gender dysphoria in our patients and um, initiating hormonal therapy and surgical consults um, when appropriate. The framework includes didactic training as well as team-wide training. So, the trainings that include everything from administrative training, social work training, or even just kind of what gender affirming practice 101 training, um, all of those go uh, to the entire team or subsets of the team as appropriate. But then the clinicians in particular, who were deemed to be the champions of their project, would come to Center Town and shadow our trans health clinic. And then we slowly transition to offering the care ourselves under the supervision of the um, CHC family physicians who do this type of work. And the CHC physicians have continued to be accessible in answering our questions and providing us um, with avenues or resources that our patients may need. Um, and so that, that's been a real benefit for us. So much of uh, the materials that we create and so much of our training um, is based on trauma-informed care, um, as well as teaching about the importance of informed consent. Understanding the principles of gender self-determination, knowing how to prov provide trauma-informed care. Uh, those are those are just a few of the pillars of what we call principles of trans-affirming care. And that has to be the foundation from where the medicine grows. 
our evaluations um, have demonstrated that we have trained uh, very competent physicians and nurse practitioners for providing this care. Starting July, we're actually going to implement um, some teaching at our own academic centre with our learners and residents who are going to rotate through our uh, gender affirming care clinics. We are currently collaboratively designing a trans health resident elective. Um, and we're hoping to launch this course as an elective uh, at our local university in 2024. I also see a, specifically the capacity building project growing um, to partner um, with folks who are in more rural areas, as well as hopefully eventually um, in more francophone uh, communities in Ontario East. With the launch of, um, of our pilot again, um, hearing the enthusiasm from entirely new groups of family health teams for working together and collaborating on creating more access uh, for this type of care is incredibly rewarding. And hopefully we'll grow to the point that will no longer be needed because there will be that capacity with uh, already with trans patients, primary care providers. Talk about transformative change. Please help me welcome Holly Brown from Trans Health Project Lead at the uh, Centre Town CHC to the stage. Yes! And she is looking fabulous in this blue dress. Okay. <laughs> I cry at commercials and that video gets me every time. Um, okay, I just need a moment. Okay. So thank you. Uh, thank you um, to the Alliance for this award and thank you for elevating the trans community. <clears throat> I'm grateful to my team. Um, They're not here, uh, but I'm sure they will see this. Uh, you are dedicated, passionate, and provide some of the best trauma-informed, patient-centered care. <clears throat> Thank you to our leadership at Centertown uh, CHC for believing in our vision, listening, and being brave. I'm a Northern Ontario transplant I'm a queer spawn, which means I was raised by same-sex parents. I identify as a queer woman, and I have four children, and two of them are gender diverse. I'm also um, old enough uh, for you to um, deduct that that has not been a cakewalk for me. So for this reason, I would be remiss not to use this opportunity for a call to action. The trans community is under attack. <clears throat> Ramped structural violence is happening in the US and the UK, and we have all the data that we need to know that this is coming, coming and happening in Canada as well. <clears throat> this is putting minority stress and suicidality at extremely high rates. Too long wait lists, as the video showed, to access transitional medicine is also one of the strongest contributing factors to suicidality for this community. And guess what? Healthcare is social justice. Caring is a truly profound and radical act. And this room is perfectly suited to answer the call and be part of our very measured response to uplifting this community. You have the skills to rapidly consolidate. You already have the mandate. How can we talk about equity 
without dedicated provisions for the trans and non-binary community. This is a low hanging fruit on the uphill mountain of health inequities. And for the community, it is life-saving. The Canadian Human Rights Act includes the Gender Identity and Gender Expression Act, which is Bill C-16. This bill passed after two unsuccessful attempts. So what is the most salient difference that led to its eventual success? There are a few reasons um, that can be extrapolated, but I personally think that the big difference was allyship. At the third reading, what changed was that it wasn't just the trans community standing alone. You know who showed up? Moms. <laughs> we brought our fury and we stood in solidarity. And that's what I'm asking you to do now. That's your role. That's your power. This is how you can help reconcile your privilege. And if I may, I would say it is our collective duty. Thank you so much for this award. Thank you, congratulations, uh, um, and uh, thank you for the work that you do. The next award, the Joe Leonard Award, is the highest honor given by the Alliance for Healthier Communities. Named after the first executive director of LAMP CHC, this award recognizes individuals who have demonstrated extraordinary leadership, commitment, and support for creative solutions to accessible, high quality, and affordable healthcare. The person we are honoring tonight embodies all of these qualities and more. Nanye, did I say that right? Nanye? Nanye. Nanye? Nanye. Nanye. <laughs> Kuchea, <laughs> former executive director at Somerset West Community Health Center in Ottawa. <laughs> Yang Yi, retired recently after 28 years. 28 years. Started when it was about four or five years old. Of dedicated service at three local community health Center, service centers, Lowtown Community Service Center, the Pinecrest Queenway Community Health Center, in addition to Somerset West. I'm trying to say this name again. I just, I have such a particular desire to honor people with their names, yes, yes, or yes. <laughs> right, when we recognize each other, and we see each other, and we name each other, then we can care for one another, yes? Nanye. 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 <laughs> Forgive me. Provided exceptional leadership related to health equity in many arenas at the local OHT and at the health and well being table of the local immigrant partnerships to address the health inequities during the pandemic. She also supported staff to work with community partners in the development of the Ottawa Black Mental Health Coalition. <laughs> Please join me, put your hands together, and welcome Nanye to the stage. Let me hear you.
It is so wonderful to be here with my family again. Um, it's so wonderful to hear about all the other awards today. I guess it's an, it's, I feel honored with this recognition, but any achievement that I've had has really been due to teamwork with my staff, with the community, with the board of directors, and volunteers, and of course my family who are here with me today. I have to say that, you know, when we talk about 28 years, I'll, I'll age myself. It was almost 36 years ago <laughs> that I, I remember when I began as a community worker knocking on the doors at, uh, in the Jane and Finch community. And um, when I was doing this work, a number of um, residents told me I should not be doing this alone. It's not safe. And it really shocked me that a community that was that diverse, uh, that had so many seniors, children, and youth, was considered unsafe. And I was a new immigrant from India at that time. And um, I could not understand how a country that was so wealthy and had so many opportunity could have such disparity. And since then, I worked in many, many communities with a lot of oppression, and I realized what the situation was. Uh, of course, Jane and Finch has some wonderful leadership from Cheryl and her team, the local CHCs. Um, and I also lived through the arc of um, equity work. So when I first began, uh, really comfortable language was multiculturalism, cross-culturalism. It took a very long time before people would use the terms racism or colonization. Just a few weeks ago, um, after my retirement, I went to Halifax and um, I learned about the uh, black people who had come to the shores of Nova Scotia after the American Revolution uh, to seek freedom. So when you enter the Black Cultural Museum, there are quotes, and uh, the quotes say, this is the place, Birchtown, the haven of freedom. Is this the place of freedom? Is this where we anchored our ship of hope? These questions are an echo of the hidden racism that has been part of our inheritance here. And when you think of the residential school system and all the other inequities. And what I also learned was shortly after the arrival, there was a famine and who were the most affected people? The black people who had come. And then there were race riots shortly after, so many left and uh, many were indentured. When you do this kind of work in the community, there is um, going to be a lot of heartbreak. It's very hard work. We heard some wonderful presentations about how difficult this work is. It's hard to come to work and see that there are so many children living with um, distinctive disadvantage early in their lives or people who are choosing between uh, food and housing. And it can be very discouraging to see this every day. But at CHCs, we know how to turn despair into action. The beauty of community health centers is that we are anchored in our communities. Sorry, I'm speaking about CHCs because that is my experience, <laughs> but it belongs to the other communities who are community-based as well. And at the, at the CHC that I worked in, I learned that it is important to be hopeful, to have trust in community, and to see that resilience grows when communities come together. 
So I learned a number of tools, like uh, um, popular theater. I was a very bad actor, but the, uh, but the actual <laughs> tool was wonderful. Community kitchens, you know, simple things where people can come together and uh, they can get engaged and uh, they can, um, you know, um, develop crosswalks if, if that's what's needed in the community, form community associations. Um, they can uh, agitate for tenant rights and even run for the city council. CHCs know how to build leadership in the community. And a very important lesson for me was that it, even more important than doing was being. That it was important to respect the wisdom of the community, to listen. Because often the solutions that the community came up with were the right ones. So um, an example is that the um, Peers. It was the peers uh, in the harm reduction program at Somerset that developed the DOPE program, where uh, people with lived experience support other users. Also an important thing I learned was that CHCs are conveners. We bring disparate voices together. So a um, wonderful memory is of homeowners, people who are tenants, and people who are homeless coming together and trying to envision a more inclusive community, uh, a community where there's more affordable housing. We need a lot more of that, and CHCs can imagine a better world. You know, we, we know how to work with uh, programs and reduce health in inequities in our communities. We are wonderful. Uh, we also know for meaningful change to happen, uh, equity is critical, that diversity is critical, and representation is very important. We also know that when there are injustices, we speak out. Um, in Ottawa, the community health and resource centers, I don't know how many people are here from there, are actually known as the unofficial opposition of the city council. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we know how to, sp how to speak out. And I was so lucky to be able to work at Somerset West Community Health Center and my career there. It is a legendary center which has stood for so many important issues and has done such important work, um, whether it is, of course, harm reduction and many other um, organizations are also doing that work, uh, whether it is um, creating the Newcomer Health Center to serve the immigrants and refugees, or um, looking at alternatives to policing, again, with partners. And honestly, this work was not a job. It was hard work for me. And lastly, I would like to give a shout out to the Alliance. Being on the board of the Canadian Association of Community Health Centers, I learned how unique Ontario was in the kind of support we get in navigating the always changing political and funding landscape. It's important to grow and to sustain community-based organizations, CHCs, and I would say that we are service providers, but we are also change agents. And it has been wonderful to be part of this movement, and it has been a privilege to work with leaders like yourselves to serve the community. Merci, Megwich. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Naini, for this inspirational address. Um,
Before we wrap up the evening, that was the last award. Yes, I can confirm it's the last award. Before we wrap up the evening, I would like to recognize the people who have helped make this evening a success. Special thanks to Five Line Media Production for video editing. Um, thank you again to tonight's award recipients. Congratulations. I thank you for your work and for sharing your success with us. Thank you. Et pour terminer, je tiens à vous saluer vous tous qui travaillent dans, sans relâche pour créer des communautés plus en santé partout en Ontario. Votre travail change profondément des vies et le système de santé. It is a genuine pleasure and inspiration to be all um, to be with you all celebrating these amazing achievements. I hope day two of the conference will present even more opportunities for collaboration, innovation, and transformation. I think today we had some very, very good sessions and discussions. We were talking at our table there, and you know there was a lot of substance. So we hope that it's going to continue tomorrow. And finally, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> finally. A special thanks to our wonderful MC, Coco. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lieben. It was truly a pleasure. You know, when I first introduced myself, I said I was seventh generation Canadian. It was the black loyalists that our last award recipient was talking about. My great, 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 great grandpa's name was Earl Cromwell. He lived in Louisiana and fought for the British during the War of Independence. And when the British lost the war, they were like, oh, what are we going to do now? <laughs> What's going on? They decided to, to send 4,000 uh, freed, African former slaves to Nova Scotia. And they promised them land, 40 acres and a mule. I'm still waiting. <laughs> and it was the indigenous peoples that helped them survive. And apparently they fell in love, and now you have me. <laughs> and so tonight, the award video will be available at, on the Alliance website. So if you want to rewatch, you're more than welcome and share it with your networks. We encourage you to do so. Please go to allianceon.org. It's almost time for dinner. If you have any special dietary requirements, please uh, hand your tickets to the server at this time. Um, and you can, they can provide you with a, any, any uh, information on those special meal requests. I'd like to take a moment to thank, to say thank you to the wonderful food that's about to be served. Can we give it up for this beautiful venue? They did such a great job. And to all the people who nurtured it and prepared it and are putting it on our tables, I know you may have your own way of giving thanks, and so we take a moment to do so before we start the meal, yes? Lastly, I'd like to thank all of you for your commitment and dedication. The task at hand may seem daunting, Knowing our labor is not in vain, to achieve healthy equity for all may seem like an impossible dream. But tonight it proves that those dreams can come true, yes? Tonight we prove that if we stand together we can make a difference, yes? Whether it's for oral health care, digital equity, indigenous tradition. Anytime you're ready, DJ. <laughs> I always love when I get to sing a big song at an event like this one. <laughs> Anybody know what song I'm going to sing? It's impossible to guess. It's impossible to know, eh? <laughs> oh, I am Canadian. I said, hey, didn't I? am really Canadian. Eh? <laughs> a little bit of Caribbean roots in there, too. And so tonight we prove that the impossible dreams can come true. The dreams of my ancestors can come true. 
we can have a free, equitable country if we keep going. Yes? And yes? Or yes? To dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. To bear with unbearable sorrows. To run where the brave dare not go. To right the unrightable wrong. And to love pure and chaste from afar. To try when your arms are too weary. To reach the unreachable star. This is our quest to follow that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far to fight for our rights without question or pause to be willing to march march into hell for that heavenly cause and I If I'll always be true to this glorious quest that my heart... Sounds like people are hungry. Maybe I should end this song a little sooner. <laughs> when I'm late to my rest. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's because of you. This world, it's better because of the work that you're doing. It's better that we stand together. One cause, one voice, one people, one nation, united for equity, for positivity, for humanity, for liberty, for justice, for peace. Yes, yes, or yes. Yes. To reach the unreachable star. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your evening. The unreachable star. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your meal. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Look forward to meeting all of you. Thank you again. Thank you to the Alliance. Thank you to my co-host, Lieben. I appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful rest of your night. I'll see you on the dance floor later. <laughs> and I'll always dream the impossible dream. Yes, and I'll always reach the unreachable. Stop.